Uh, as we uh, appreciate y'all being here as we get ready for our first game, uh, I'm probably a little more nervous than I normally am because I've been evaluating our team and looking at our roster and realize that uh, it's very similar to 2013. We have four true freshmen that are slated to play a lot, as well as seven redshirt freshmen that are going to play a lot. Very, very similar to the 2013 team. And when I go back and look at 2013, our first game was against an FCS opponent, Eastern Illinois, and we got beat. So I'm more nervous than I normally am because of those facts. You think your team is, uh, I don't want to say overrated, but being counted on to accomplish more than perhaps, I mean, the people, the expectations in this town seem very, very high. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's what we want. We want them to expect. But it's not like pro football. It's not like we have the same guys we had last year or the year before that or the year before that. Teams and their personality and their, in this, in this case, their maturity changed dramatically from year to year in college football. But we, we like the idea that people expect us to be good, and we like the idea that we think we can be good, and we like the idea that we think we can win enough games to have a chance for the conference championship and hopefully get into another bowl game. We like that. We like all that ideas. But the idea that if we don't win certain games that it's a failure is people that don't understand college football. How many teams went undefeated last year? I don't think any. Rocky, uh, new slogan, one city, one team. In the weeks leading up to, uh, to this first game through camp and everything, and, and here today and around campus, have you noticed more attention and more buzz around your team this year with the Chargers gone than not? I, uh, I see more people here at the press conference than normal, or more cameras at the press conference than normal. I don't know if that, that means, uh, I don't know if that means, if that answers your question. I don't necessarily think our team feels any more than they normally do. I don't see more people at practice, and I, don't, I didn't see more people at our scrimmage, and I, don't, I know we've sold a few uh, more season tickets than we have in the past. Uh, so I, I would say it's very similar to the way it was last year. Rocky, with these young guys, obviously they knew last year the guys that weren't going to be in the room this year. And how anxious, I know you haven't played and you don't know what they're going to do, but how anxious have these guys been to embrace these roles that they have now, these young guys? Well, the best thing about being young is, is you don't know all the pitfalls that an old guy like me knows. They, they all think they're going to be as good as they were as seniors in high school. And it's a long time ago since I played as a redshirt freshman because in my day, freshmen could not play. So I played as a redshirt freshman. I can remember the first game I played in, and everything was so much faster than I'd ever experienced before and so much faster than practice. But if I bring those four freshmen in here, true freshmen that are going to play, and you ask them, oh, they're excited, and they know they're going to be good, and. I mean, it's, it's, that's, it's good to be young. You don't, you don't know what's going to happen to you out there. You actually think you're going to be as good as you were last year as a senior in high school. Well, guess what? They're not. But I like their attitude. I like that they think they are. <laughs> How do you deal with that? If a player goes into the game thinking that they're going to be really good and then they have a terrible first game, what do you go and tell them after the game? That they're young and it'll get better. We have, we've had a lot of really good players around here that did not play very well early in their career. I know the, the first player who's lost a starting job is, of course, John Barron would have been the starting punter if you hadn't found an alternative. And it's probably a good thing that he can focus on place kicking. But what would you like to say about the, the improvement of the special team now it looks like you found a punter? Well, we, we do have a punter that, that all he does is punt, even though he tells me he can kick field goals. And up until yesterday's practice, I was uh, 
not very pleased because he was very inconsistent. Now he he kicked the heck out of the ball yesterday, and it was every it was every punt that he he probably had 12 or 15 punts. Every single punt was really good yesterday. So maybe he's a game week guy. That's what I'm counting on. <laughs> Hey, Rocky, Trey Lomax, Trey had that pretty strong freshman season. He's dealt with injuries since then. He says he's healthy now. Have you gotten enough out of him, even given the injuries, as far as what he's Yeah, I think, I think Trey's one of those guys that came into our program and has helped our program get to the point it is now. I, I think there's, if you go way back, I think there's a lot of guys that came in and played probably too early. Since we're taught we're on that theme, Trey was one of them. He had to play uh, before he was really ready to mentally and physically. But it, but it, by the end of the year, he was he was a decent player, and he's been good every time he's been healthy. He's been a really good player for us. Can you see him being more of an every down guy? Because haven't you kind of used him more situationally in some respects? No, I, I think that his ability is he's a very good football player that diagnoses plays really well. He struggles in man coverage. Okay, so in the past when we were going to play a lot of man, we'd put an extra corner in there at the safety spot. Uh, now, Trey is also our backup Aztec or free safety, and that guy is the guy that has to play him. A bunch of different positions. You know, he's a free safety, he's a linebacker, he's a strong safety. He does all those things, and I I can see Trey alternating over there at times too. I think he'll play more this year than he did last year. But we're still going to be substituting in certain situations when we're when we know we're going to be in a man situation, man coverage situation, and there's four wideouts out there. We'll still substitute that way. And that's been a, more of a speed issue. That that's a speed else. issue. Totally a speed issue because he's a really good football player. He just doesn't run very fast. And if you're going to bring up 2013, so I, there have been years where you've been competitive for 45 minutes and the other team's bench is just deeper than yours and that fourth quarter you just get worn down. How would you consider your bench this year? Do you think your bench is going to be competitive with the opposition? Well, first of all, I disagree with the first statement. Uh, we have been beat before, and we've been beat because of being young and making mistakes and incons inconsistency. But if you look at our record in the fourth quarter when it's been close, we've been a really, really good football team. So I don't, I don't think that we've ever been worn down. We've been worn out because they played better. I mean, but we haven't been worn down. But I think our depth, uh, our depth's pretty good, but it's young. I mean, we've got. I could, I could really cry the blues here today and tell you about how many redshirt freshmen are going to play a lot. We got four true freshmen going to play a lot, but we got eight redshirt freshmen that are going to play a lot too. Now, hopefully them being here for two years, they're, they're used to the speed of the college game. Uh, but they're also very critical in our depth. second quarter you'll be like hey these guys are ready what are some things that you'll see where you'll know these guys are ready my concerns are ease or uh oh well well see that's why I'm so nervous that, that the other concern I have is is I don't know what to expect our coaches don't know what to expect so uh, training our players to be ready for what to expect is very very difficult they've got a brand new coaching staff an experienced coaching staff but a brand new coaching staff that we don't know because we haven't seen one of their teams play. Uh, we don't know what they're going to do on offense, defense, or special teams. So we're going into the game blind. Now we're using history of when they've coached before at other places. We've been watching those films to try to get an idea on what they're going to do. Uh, but we're, we're really going in the game not knowing anything about what they're going to do. Now we've watched their personnel. We know what kind of personnel they have. So I would guess that the first quarter or so, we're going to be feeling our way. And that probably helps the freshmen because they don't know any better. You know, they just go out and play and they don't worry about what the other, where your veteran players actually are looking for keys and things that are going to give them an advantage of freshman. He's just worried about where to line up and what he's supposed to do. So maybe having those young guys will help us this week. 
handed the defensive coordinator duties over for to Danny Gonzalez. How has that opened up your coaching repertoire? I'm still calling the defense. Have you been able to focus on anything else and let him? That's what he's been doing. He, that's what he's been doing the last two years. That's why he was named defensive coordinator. Hey, Rocky. Uh, so the Chargers are gone now. I know you just mentioned, you know, you said business as usual. But you did just say there's a ton more cameras in here, um, a lot more maybe attention being paid to the team this year just simply because of the early football team. Uh, I think the guys notice any of that pressure? No, I don't think that, make, I don't think that makes a darn bit of difference to our team. I think, I think our team relishes the idea that we're considered good. I think our team relishes the idea that uh, we're supposed to be good. And I think they do that, but I don't think they could, I don't think they think one thing about the Chargers not being here. I don't think they care. I don't think they think about it. You've got a pretty good offensive line, obviously, the last several years, and the running backs with it. Uh, rate your offensive line coming into this season, your thoughts? We're right back to young and inexperienced, but I think phys physically we're more talented than the, we've been the last two years. There's, there's more offensive linemen that have potential to be NFL football players out there right now than there was the last two years. Now, are they playing at that level? They're not even close to playing at that level yet. But if you talk about their size and strength and their athletic ability, their potential is, is the best we've had around here. Potential does not win football games. And, you know, they're going to be playing against uh, older, more experienced players than they ever have before. They're, they're, they're freshmen, too. They've been going out, and they run into someone, and they fall down in high school because they're so much bigger and stronger than the guys they're blocking. Well, guess what? They're going to run into some guys now that are going to fight back, and they're not going to fall down for them. So we'll see how quick they adjust to that. Well, I think Coach Horton's going to rely on the passing game more than he has in the past until those, until those young offensive linemen are playing at a high level. And uh, I think we've got more depth at wide receiver, and we've got some big guys that he can throw it up to that hopefully can outjump some people for the ball. And I, I, I don't think that uh, until our offensive line gets experienced, I don't think we're going to be able to run the ball when they put nine and ten guys in the box. Uh, so you got to prevent them from putting nine and ten guys in the box. And that means we have to count on our quarterback and our receivers more than maybe in the past, especially early in the season. Hey, Rocky, a lot of talk about the Mountain West Conference as a whole being better this season. Uh, Colorado State, impressive opener, San Jose State started well. Uh, your, your reaction <laughs> to, to I the like how, I like how you put that. Started okay. well, but what, what you saw from the Mountain West last weekend, and in your estimation, is the conference better this year? Well, I think it's yet to be seen. I, I think Colorado State obviously proved that they're a very good football team. Okay? Uh, in my opinion, only watching on TV, in my opinion, they looked a lot better than South Florida did. A lot better. I thought that San Jose put up a fight, but I thought South Florida uh, has a lot of athletic ability out there that is considered the, one of the top teams in the non-Power 5 leagues. And if you just look at one game on TV, Colorado State's a whole lot better than they are. So I don't know where San Jose fits in the mix, but I think you have to wait until all of us play to see how tough the league is. But a good start for the league. Great start for Colorado State. 